Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and uh, today I have brought a very interesting problem that appeared on one of our tests. It's also a path from, uh, problem from Pathfinder. This is a challenge your understanding, rotational mechanics, problem number 6. Uh, I mean a, a little different wording as it appeared in the test but almost the same problem. So I'll be presenting to you with the language it came in uh, uh, the All India test series. So let's see, let's have a look at the problem. So here's the problem, okay. A light rigid ring of radius r is equal to 1 meter has two identical beads a and b each of mass 1 kg. So this is our uh, ring and it has got two beads, the one is bead a and other is bead b and both beads have mass 1 kg each, okay. The ring is hinged at the top point, here we have hinged it in such a way that it can rotate in a vertical plane freely about the horizontal axis. Uh, into the plane of the diagram as shown. So it can rotate about this axis like this or this uh, in either way. Okay. Okay. Bead A is rigidly attached to the ring and bead, uh, bead B is free to slide along the ring without friction. So this is welded but this can freely slide like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, without friction. There's absolutely no friction. Immediately after the bead B is released, we have to comment on what are the possibilities which of the following statements are, is correct upon releasing the bead. So what are the options? First is the acceleration of bead B has magnitude, magnitude root 10 g by 3 meter per second square. Uh, I mean g of course has, has meter per second square so there was no need. So root 2 g by 3 uh, obviously this is the magnitude yeah. And the second option is ratio of magnitudes of horizontal and vertical hinge reactions at point O is equal to 1. So here we have to compare the horizontal and vertical reactions. And the third option, C option is acceleration of the bead A is root 2 g by 3. Acceleration of this bead, we have to comment whether this is correct or not. And then uh, D option is net reaction force from the hinge O is this much. Immediately after release, we have to find the hinge reaction. Okay. So if you want, you can give it a try. I'll get into the analysis right away. Let's see. So uh, see what's going to happen. The moment you release the system, the bead B is going to slide along the ring and this ring itself will have some angular acceleration alpha. So uh, motion of bead B uh, from the ground frame is a bit complicated. So it is easier to analyze bead B from the rotating frame of the ring and uh, the ring can be analyzed from ground frame. So that's what we are going to do. So for uh, sake of convenience, we shall make the FBD of bead B from rotating frame of the ring and the FBD of the ring from the ground frame. So try to recall from standard theory that what are the pseudo forces that we need to apply in the rotating frames. So what are the th three pseudo forces uh, that we apply in rotating frames? The first force is of course the centrifugal force. The second one is the Coriolis force that is minus 2m omega cross v. And the third one is the Euler force in case the our rotating frame also has the angular acceleration. So in our case uh, fortunately. Uh, or I mean uh, uh, the omega is zero okay immediately after releasing the bead omega is zero so therefore there's no centrifugal force and there's no correlation force so that simplifies things a little bit uh, we could have done it even with that uh, but uh, here there's no omega so those two forces are not there but yes the ring will have some angular acceleration and because of that in the ring frame we'll have to apply an Euler force and what is the Euler force so uh, all of you must be knowing that uh, if some particle is located at r distance and this has got an angular acceleration alpha then Euler force is uh, m r alpha in the opposite sense to the alpha okay so this is reverse direction pseudo forces there okay so we shall make the free body diagrams in this manner ring we'll see from the <coughs> uh, ground frame and this bead we will see from the ring frame okay so uh, let's say this bead b applies some normal reaction let us say n is the normal reaction from the bead acting on the ring immediately after release of course this bead has a gotten mg and the ring itself was light and this is the welded bead okay and let's say angular acceleration alpha so i am making the torque equation about point o so this torque is mg and perpendicular distance is r so mgr and this is n into r so mgr minus nr should be equal to uh, 2 mr square alpha so one torque is clockwise the other torque is anti clockwise therefore a minus n. so that's the equation number one okay now, as I said, since the ring has an angular acceleration from the frame of the ring, the bead B will also experience an Euler force in addition to the real forces. So now I'm making the free body diagram of the bead B. 
I have not shown it detached from the ring, but uh, understand it here itself. I have drawn the FBD, so it will experience a normal reaction from the ring like this. Okay, and there will be an mg, and uh, this is, these two are the real forces, and then there will be pseudo force. So this distance is root two r, right? So root two r alpha into m. So root two m r alpha is the Euler force acting. If I have taken alpha to be in this direction, so uh, try to visualize, try to see how we apply the Euler force. So if the angular acceleration is in this direction, the Euler force is in the opposite direction, equal to m r alpha, right? Okay. So now uh, for the bead, I can make the equations in the vertical direction as well as the horizontal direction. Now, if you see from the ring frame, the bead has got no velocity and therefore centripetal acceleration of the bead is zero. Okay. From the ring frame, centripetal acceleration of the bead is zero. Why? Because the speed itself is zero, and therefore the forces in this direction they should be balanced. Centripetal direction forces should be balanced, and the vertical forces lead to the tangential acceleration of the bead. Right. So that's what I have done. I have made the equation in the vertical direction. So what are the forces in the vertical direction? There is mg, and then Euler force cos 45 degree. So that's what I have written. This is Euler force cos 45 degree. That should be equal to m a. So that gives me equation number two. Okay. Here a is the acceleration of the bead from the rotating frame of the ring. Now horizontal force balance. This normal reaction should be balanced by the cos 45 degree component of the Euler force. So that's what I've written. Normal reaction is root 2 m r alpha cos 45 degree. So n is m r alpha. This is the third equation. So now I have three equations and three unknowns. You see, what are the unknowns? N is unknown, alpha is unknown, and then a is unknown. So three unknowns uh, and three equations. You see, these are the three unknowns and three equations. Okay, alpha, n, and a. So we can see. Now in equations one, two, three, unknowns are n, a, and alpha, and we can solve them very easily. Just eliminate and substitute and solve. So you get acceleration if upon solving, you get acceleration as 4g by 3a. This is in the ring frame. Then alpha is g by 3r and n is mg by 3. That's what we get. Okay. So now we can easily find the acceleration of the bead from the ground frame. So acceleration of the bead from the ground frame will be acceleration of the bead from the rotating frame plus. Acceleration of the point coinciding with the bead. Please mark my statement very carefully, because the each point of the rotating frame has got different acceleration. So you can't just do that acceleration of this plus acceleration of that related to this for any arbitrary point. Whenever you are writing uh, some motion related to rotating frame, you should always write it in the following manner: acceleration of that particle as seen from the rotating frame plus the acceleration of the Particle of the rotating frame that coincided with this particle. Okay, that's what we have to add. We cannot add the acceleration just about any particle. So sometimes students get confused. Some of my students were thinking we the pivot has not accelerated. So whatever is the acceleration? I mean, all kinds of weird ideas sometimes students get. But please remember this: acceleration is to be found in the following manner. Acceleration of that particle related to the rotating frame plus acceleration of the particle of the rotating frame which coincided with this particle that's what you have to do okay so so imagine this is our bead b and just below this you imagine a point b dash of the ring okay so the coinciding points right so what's the acceleration of b dash that is root 2 r alpha so root 2 r alpha and this 4g by by 3 we need to uh, uh, do a vector addition okay so that's what i have done a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta And uh, I forgot to write a cos for uh, cos 135 degrees. There should have been cos of 3 pi by 4. Why cos 3 pi by 4? I'll show you. So this angle and this this whole angle is actually 135 degrees. So, but I calculated it correctly. So uh, I put it in a calculator and there I had added cos 3 pi by 4. So if you calculate this, you already know a. You already know alpha, and you just put all these values. So you get acceleration of B from ground frame as g root 10 by 3. So option A is correct. That's what it says. So option A is correct. Okay. And now what about the acceleration of bead A? So you know that it uh, if ring is rotating with alpha, uh, so uh, this acceleration is simply root 2 r alpha, right? So acceleration of A is simply root 2 r alpha, and you put the value of alpha, so you get root 2 g by 3, and that's our option C. If you see acceleration of bead A is root 2 g by 3. so option c is also correct okay now we need to comment on the normal reaction i mean the bead pivot reactions so ny and nx uh, from the pivot we need to comment on that for options c b and d we need to comment on that okay so now we need to find the hinge reactions we can see using the we can use the following equations for the system as a whole 
so to make things simple i am not uh, i am trying to avoid the internal forces i am just writing net external force is equal to mass sigma mi ai of the different parts of the system okay and this equation you learn when you study center of mass and this is always a good way of making equations why because uh, this avoids the internal forces and taking comprehensive internal forces altogether sometimes this is uh, the best uh, way of making the equations okay so in x direction uh, what is the external force on the system as a whole that is nx okay and now this should be equal to mass of b times x acceleration of b plus mass of a times x acceleration of a so sigma mi i am using in components form so nx is m into root 2r alpha cos 45 degree this is for bc root 2 alpha root r, and this is 45 degree and so root 2r alpha cos 45 degree right this is for b and for a you see root 2 r alpha and again cos 45 factor for, for horizontal direction so m into root 2 r alpha cos 45 this is for a so if you just uh, simplify this you get nx as 2 mg by 3 okay now we can do the same thing for ny so so total uh, vertical external force should be equal to sigma mi ay i okay uh, so that's what i have done so what is the net vertical force so this is mg on the system and this is also mg on the system and there is ny acting upwards so that's what i have written 2 mg minus ny okay mg plus mg becomes 2 mg and there is minus ny so that's net external vertical force that should be equal to c uh, for this one what is the vertical acceleration root 2 r alpha into cos 45 degree or if you want sin 45 degree okay so root 2 r alpha cos 45 degree this is for the bead a downward acceleration right and for bead b what is the downward acceleration so there is 4g by 3 that was relative to the ring and plus uh, this one root 2 r alpha cos 45 degree this is upward so there has to be minus sign when you are writing the downward acceleration so this is 4 g by 3 minus root 2 r alpha cos 45 degree okay and if you simplify this equation you get n y as 2 m g by 3 so we got n x also as uh, 2 m g by 3 where is that yeah n x is also 2 m g by 3 and n y is also uh, 2 m g by 3 so n x n y upon n x is 1 okay and total pivot reaction you can simply do under root of nx square plus ny square that comes to be 20 root 2 by 3 if you put m equal to 1 kg and uh, r is 1 meter and uh, uh, g is 10 so if you do that you get pivot reaction as 20 root 2 by 3 newton and if you look at the option that's what they say so option b is ratio of magnitude to horizontal and vertical hinge reaction at point o is equal to 1 so we found this to be 1 so this is correct okay option b is also correct and net reaction force is 20 root 2 by 3 newton this is also correct and a and c we already found out they were correct so the correct options a b c d all the options all the four options are correct so that was my analysis for this problem this is a pathfinder challenge your understanding problem 6 from rotation mechanics and also all india test series uh, question uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the analysis uh, please hit the like button and uh, share this video as much as possible with your friends through facebook whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you might be using for uh, networking with your fellow students who are preparing for JE or Olympiads and uh, most importantly if you are not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel uh, because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all thank you